Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone had a good lunch. Everyone seems real busy with their work, especially the back ventures. Okay, let's start. So my name is Dheeraj and I work for Rakamai Technologies. I am based in Bangalore, India. We'll be speaking about something about OTT and Akamai in Malaysia. So Akamai is the world's largest cloud platform for content delivery. We have uh, more than 2 lakh uh, 50,000 deployed servers all over the globe. And it is spread out in more than 130 countries, as you see. And we cover more than 1,600 networks, which spans over more than 1,000 cities and close to 4,000 locations. So just last month, we broke the record of delivering 100 TBPS traffic. So covering Malaysia. So we are fairly covered with our partners in Malaysia. So the ISPs like Maxis, then TM, then there are partners like Cellcom, and many other partners in which we have our CDN already deployed. So we are fairly delivering most of the traffic in country and we're rarely very very rarely it maps out to Singapore via the peering and the PNIs. So how Akamai is present in an internet exchange and how do we serve? So we are connected to the route server and we also do the bilateral peerings. And we have a transit link connecting to our setup. Via the transit link, we fetch the content from the content origin from our customer. And then we cache it in our CDN, which goes on to the peering networks. So these are the details of Akamai connection to JBIX. So we are present in Equinix SG1, and we have a 10 gig port with JBIX. So Equinix SG1 is a big infrastructure that we have, and it covers a lot of uh, different type of content. So if you peer with JBIX, you'll be able to get a lot of Akamai content from there. Okay, let's talk about OTT. So any media, any text, any videos that are shared um, by the people among themselves or it might be from a content owner to the end user without any MSOs coming in between the picture. So the internet service provider, they are delivering the package they might or might not know what the content is exactly, and they might not have any authority over the delivery of traffic. So it is the content owner who has to optimize the traffic and also the CDN that delivers the traffic optimally to the end user. So if we look at the older ways before the OTT, so for voice calling, we had the classic telephony system, and then we used to do a lot of SMS before WhatsApp or other uh, applications came in. 
Then there were like DVDs, video series, VHS, which we used to get on rent from some store and then we used to watch it on TV. Then there is still the television, the cable network, the satellite broadcasting system. So this is all now changing with the new trend of the OTT coming into the picture. So whenever we are at home, when we have some free time, we always want to see some interesting content of our choice. So we might switch to some platform, maybe Netflix, maybe video, etc. And then we try to see the interesting content that we want to see. It might be some music videos, it might be some web series you want to see, some uh, new movie that has only been released only on the internet. So this is our trend, trend that is coming up like Netflix and other content owners, they are tying up with the production houses and many movies are like only be released on the web instead of the multiplexes. So let's touch upon live streaming and VOD, video on demand. So if there is some uh, live event going on, it might be some soccer game, it might be a cricket match, it might be a tennis game, golf, etc. So the live stream that goes to the end users is the live streaming and it may or may not get recorded, depends upon the uh, broadcaster, the content owner, if he wants to record it, it can be recorded. And the other thing is the video on demand. Like you want to watch some uh, YouTube content that is already been recorded but is present on the cloud already. So that will come under the VOD, video on demand. So this is the general video streaming architecture. So there will be a source and source can be in a stadium, in a conference hall like this, which will be recording the live event. And then it goes to certain infrastructure like encoders and then encoders will send the stream to the packagers. And then it comes on to the CDN platform and from there it gets distributed as per the demand. And then we have the end users, they are using the different types of media players. They might be watching content over the mobile or their tablets, or maybe laptop or smart TVs. Then is the video on demand. So there is a big library, so Every content owner owns or holds a very big video library, like uh, talk about Amazon, Amazon Prime, or Disney is going to release their uh, live streaming services, uh, maybe by end of this month. So it's a very huge library. It might be in uh, terabytes or petabytes. From there, it gets uh, transcoded and then reaches the CDN platform. And from the CDN platform, it gets delivered to the end users, again on the various medias like cell phone, tabs, etc. So in whole of this scenario, there are few challenges that the user or the content provider or the media provider can face. So first comes the broadcaster. He needs to take care of the first mile, that is the live recording that they are doing. They need to make sure that it is seamlessly transferred to the ingest servers, and the ingest servers are taken care by the CDN platform. The CDN platform has to take care of the optimal delivery to the end users. And then comes the carrier support. 
for the last mile, and they are also involved in the first mile. So they need to make sure that there is least latency and the path is optimized so that the user gets the best path to reach the content. And then it falls upon the end user. He is also responsible to take care of the Wi-Fi device that he has at home or maybe his mobile connection. So if you want to watch a 4K or a HD video, you cannot be doing it over a 2G or 3G network properly. You will face serious buffering. So you need a good network at your end. So all in all, all four are the stakeholders to have a seamless OTT delivery to the end user. So let's talk about the OTT trend. So these are some events starting from uh, 2004 and up till 2018 FIFA World Cup. And these are the peak traffic in GBPS. So 2004, we saw that US election day. So it was like more than 15 years. The traffic hit around 21 gig peak. Then there was in 2008, there was some tournament, which again took the traffic to 444 GBPS. Then it hit 1T in 2009, and so on. It has been increasing till date. So uh, last year in 2018, we broke the world record for most viewers watching a stream. So the peak concurrency, there was around 10.39 million of concurrent viewers that was delivered by Akamai CDN platform. And the interesting thing is that 97% was on the mobile platform. So it is uh, very interesting to see that how mobile devices have taken up the uh, usage of the content the consumption by the end users. So whenever we are free or we are not free, we, uh, we have a habit of just keeping our mobiles somewhere in our hand and we'll have some video being playing even if we are watching it or not. So the consumption is always going up. And this was uh, this year during the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019, we, in which we hit another world record of 25.3 million peak simultaneous viewers. It was delivered for Hotstar using Akamai CDN. So let's talk about the old days before the OTT and the how the traffic has transformed. So this is a snapshot of resi residential internet. So you'll see that at night when you are at home, you want to see some interesting things, some interesting news or maybe some videos that you like. So traffic ramps up from the morning till the night. As you see, and then around 11 p.m. or maybe 12, people start going to bed and then traffic drops. So this is a snapshot for corporate internet. So this is the first peak in the morning when you reach office. So just starting the work or just uh, while you are opening up your laptop. Some people have some videos already running. That's a common case. 
and then people start getting to work and this traffic drops and then after the lunch until the closing you'll see such pattern when people leave office it falls down let's move on okay this is the mobile internet snapshot so first peak you're going to office you have taken a bus or a metro train or some cab you you have your hands free and you switch on some uh, interesting videos or maybe not interesting you find it out once you have seen it <laughs> so yeah and then the uh, second peak at noon lunch time so you some of your friends they might send you some videos but you save it for lunch okay i'll watch it in lunch let me finish off some work right now okay, then the third peak you see here at evening before leaving the office so some people over here have finished their work and now they will watch something and then the last week at night the home entertainment when you are at home you are just finished with the dinner or waiting for the dinner you're just watching some content on your mobile phones so this is the overlap of previous three graphs so you'll see that as i was mentioning the traffic ramps up from the morning and then late afternoon before the close of office or maybe some people they leave early to not stuck in traffic and then this is the entertainment at home during night so a lot of uh, people have subscribed to a lot of ott players like amazon prime uh, maybe netflix or some other ott players so they prefer to watch their own favorite series their own favorite movies when they are home and that also adds to the traffic consumption okay so we'll have a look at the pattern with ott coming into picture So uh, we see that weekdays, the five days, Monday to Friday is in a total higher than the weekends, but we'll see that volume of traffic and the peaks that is consumed during the weekend is higher because we are free, we wait for the weekend to come, we want to save some content to watch it over the weekends when we have less of the work. And this is the live streaming. So you'll see that traffic goes up when normal peak at night and then slowly starts dropping. And then after 11 p.m. or around 12, there's a sharp drop over here you'll see. Okay, so here is a snapshot of live event, some uh, live game that comprises of two halves. It may be a soccer game, it may be a cricket game or hockey or you name it. So we see that the first half was very interesting and it got till the end of the first half it got really interesting and you see so many people have hopped on to some OTT platform to watch the live stream and the traffic went quite high. Then as the first half was finished, there was a severe drop. So people just switched off their maybe mobile phones or smart TVs or tabs and maybe went on for something else. And then when the next inning starts, if it is really interesting then traffic might go up to the previous level but 
in this case, the second half was not so interesting. So people did not watch it beyond certain time or less number of people came onto the OTT platform to watch that. So this is a classic pattern of very first inning, very interesting first inning and the very not very interesting second inning. So uh, it happens with uh, us that a lot of uh, internet service providers, they start sending us emails that we are seeing. Oh, Mr. Walt. What was the score at halftime? <laughs> OK, so I'm not sure if you follow cricket. Yeah, so <laughs> we can leave that. Uh, yeah, actually, the first inning uh, there <laughs> was a very famous player uh, on the field, and he was hitting some good runs. And then uh, he actually hit so many runs that it was for sure that the other team won't be able to do that good. So yeah, and <laughs> there was a slide. Yeah. So as I was saying that uh, many ISPs, they send emails to us just at this moment. We are seeing a huge rise in traffic. Okay, and once we are about to reply to this, the another email comes, we are seeing a very huge dip in traffic. What is going on? So uh, we try to enlighten the partners, the ISPs that this can be in case of live events, so they also need to be aware that what is a live event going on uh, in the world at that time, and it might be very popular in their geography. So if content provider is a little bit aware of what are the live events or what is going on around the world, so they can easily relate. Okay, so this is a one week graph. So uh, as I was showing in the previous slides that there is a sharp drop after 11 p.m. in the traffic when people go to sleep. And see, this was the game that I showed in the last slide. So this, this is all in additional to the video on demand. So. The blue one you see is video on demand. A lot of people are watching some other content, but again, a lot of people are also watching the live event. So this is how the traffic shapes up. And then over the weekend, you are free. You have some free time. You want to watch some uh, movies or some web series. So this is the video on demand burst at that time. So uh, we have been seeing that uh, there are so many sales and uh, like the Black Friday coming in just before the Christmas by end of this uh, month. So you'll see a lot of e-commerce website, they open up the sales for their uh, consumers. And then on a particular day during a particular uh, time period, you will see a lot of hits coming in for some certain uh, domain. So you can also relate it the same to the sale period. Just imagine if it starts from uh, afternoon 12 and goes on to evening 5, you'll see a lot of uh, hits during that time. Okay, let's move on to the state of internet report. So these are the figures of IPv6 adoption in the world. I have taken some uh, few countries that can fit the slide. So you see first rank on the IPv6 adoption is Maori, then India, and then comes 
Belgium with close to 52%. So I see there is a close competition between Belgium and the United States. And on fifth is Germany with 43.2% of uh, IPv6 adoption rate. Then Vietnam is also doing good. And so is Malaysia, around 42%. Then we have the second table. This table shows the ranking of IPv6 hits. So we see that AT&T Communications America is on the first rank, then Comcast, Reliance Geo, Verizon, Charter Communications, T-Mobile, Sprint Communications, <laughs> and so on. You can also find a lot of interesting data on the stateoftheinternet.com slash IPv6. So every year we release the State of Internet Report. It has a lot of interesting uh, data in it. You can log on to the website and see a lot more interesting figures over there. So this is the visualization of the East Asia showing the IPv6 adoption rate. So, no. We see that Vietnam has around 43% IPv6 adoption. Philippines has very low, around 1.3. Archie. Okay. Indonesia has the worst of all of them not even 1%. We try to chase them to implement IPv6, but they, they are kind of lazy. They don't want to do it. Okay, then uh, this is Malaysia, close to 42, almost 42. And then we have Thailand around 29%. So this is the traffic, IPv6 traffic trend for Malaysia. So it has been growing and this data that I have been showing was the last as of 15th September when I submitted these slides, when I prepared these slides. So you see that starting from 2014, and now it has been growing up and adoption has reached around 42%. So in Malaysia, we have almost all the Akamai nodes supporting IPv6, which is good. So this is the breakdown per provider for IPv6 adoption rate. So we have around 46% in Maxis. Telecom Malaysia is around 31, 32. Then around 62 for DG telecommunications, Cellcom and U-Mobile are almost identical, 50. Then time.com is 16. Anyone here from time.com? <laughs> Okay, so this is the summary for you. So Akamai is the intelligent platform that has the span of more than 2.5 lakh, lakh servers deployed all over the globe. So, and then uh, cache servers in Malaysia, we are fairly covered with Malaysia. We are present in uh, Kuala Lumpur and then Johar Bahru with JBIX. Then if you peer with us, how you will see the end user experience is improving and you will see your transit price decrease. Then how OTT has changed the traffic consumption. 
everyone these days, even uh, small children, they know how to operate the mobiles and tabs. And they'll open some cartoon or some videos and they'll be like playing along with it. So yeah, you can imagine. And then the content owner, the CDN, the ISP and end users, all four, they have their own responsibility for a seamless OTT experience. And then the IPv6 is growing fast, but we need more and more IPv6 adoption faster because as already mentioned and everyone knows that IPv4 is depleting fast. Thank you so much. Any questions? Yeah.